A minor fire on a small freighter in Bombay Harbor is the start of a major catastrophe. The flames were almost under control when they suddenly spread, licking at nearby ammunition dumps. Natives flee from their homes. The explosion spreads the fire through the entire harbor district. Night and day, the flames roar through congested residential areas, driving 12,000 from their homes. Signal Corps pictures show a large section of the city devastated. The waterfront a shambles. Large ships were blasted ashore. Only a bombing raid could have caused as much damage. Wrecked buildings, rubble-filled streets, and far from the waterfront, parts of ships that were tossed inland. Then the grim search for bodies. Nearly 400 lost their lives, and 1,800 were seriously injured. A shocking disaster that took a terrible toll. The Mangalore Red Cross ship is loaded with food, clothing, medical supplies and mail for American servicemen and civilians now prisoners of war in Germany. Pleased are Red Cross Chairman Norman Davis and Joseph Bernhard, Chairman of the Motion Picture Industries Red Cross Week. Seven million dollars were contributed by the industry and moviegoers. These are Signal Corps pictures. Hardships of Nazi prison life made more endurable by missions of mercy. Alumni of Yeshiva College, New York, attend inaugural ceremonies for its incoming president. Representatives of 40 educational institutions attend as honors are bestowed on leading educators and statesmen. Among them, Harlan Fisk Stone, Chief Justice of the United States Supreme Court, receives an honorary degree of Doctor of Laws from Dr. Samuel Belkin, new president of Yeshiva. In Canada, ration points are a thing of the past. As a bumper beef crop, 10,600,000 head all over the Dominion are being rounded up for market. He's only two days old, but he knows when he's well off. However, Ma's got other ideas. Who said animals are dumb? Junior's in a jam again, sort of in the middle of a stream and can't change cowboys. New World production goes over the top. In Washington, House Speaker Sam Rayburn and Miss Lila Livingston Morse, the inventor's granddaughter, unveil a plaque in his honor. Marking its 100th anniversary, the first message is repeated over the original route, Washington to Baltimore. The first message was, what hath God wrought? Pasadena's Rose Bowl overflows with goodwill as representatives of 35 United Nations celebrate I Am an American Day. Everybody is here. The Danes, from Greece, from Bonnie, Scotland, from Hungary, La Belle France, we. Oui. Holland is here. The Philippines, from Poland, Mexico, south of the border. Original Americans from Korea. Oriental beauties from China. An exotic daughter of India who goes our jitterbugs one better. This little guy in the overcoat has just arrived in Washington with a whale of a thirst after flying 7,000 miles from Persia. 
Russia's armies gave him to the American armies as a goodwill gesture. Don't be forgetting that, Junior. A few of the many cameramen ready to cover D-Day. These Navy men will bring you pictures of this historical invasion. Of these war cameramen, we can only show you a few. But these are some of the men who will risk their lives to shoot this gigantic military venture. Here's Frank Purnell of Universal. He was wounded nine times taking pictures under fire. Working with the newsreel men will be the Army combat photographers. There's Neil Sullivan, a newsreeler, as is Johnny Bockhurst. Bob Blair, another old-timer. Aerial combat cameraman, Lieutenant Phil Browning, and another former newsreeler, Major Sam Greenwald. They're primed for the job, along with a guy from Brooklyn, Captain Jesse Sabin, just itching to photograph the fall of them choyman bums. An airborne army striking from the skies. That's the glider and carrier troops demonstrating their training at Laurenburg Maxton Base, North Carolina. These nylon tow ropes, honest girls, are hooked onto the tow plane, then to the gliders. Now the carriers are emptied. Split-second timing is demanded when these troops of the 1st Carrier Command hit the ground. The ticklish business of bringing in the gliders on rough terrain and in close formation. The daring of these glider men is unequaled. And here's what's known as landing on a dime. 